Okay, this is Unit 1.1, Internal Forces. Our course outcomes. Uh, there's one, develop an understanding of normal and shear stress and strain. We're going to be working on this outcome throughout this unit and this uh, understanding of normal and shear stress and strain will really be developing throughout the whole course. Our lesson outcome is to apply the equations of equilibrium to solve for our internal resultant loads. Now, you recall we use the three equations of static equilibrium, which are summing the forces in the x direction is equal to zero, summing the forces in the y direction is equal to zero, and summing moments about some point equal to zero. We use these three equations of static equilibrium to solve for unknown reaction forces. For example, here is a structure. It's a beam with two supports, a pin support at A, a roller at C. There are uh, loads applied to this beam. There is a distribute, distributed triangular shaped load with a maximum value of 350 pounds per inch applied and also a point moment here at D and the magnitude of the moment is 900 inch pounds. The next step in solving this problem uh, to find all of the external loads would be to draw a free body diagram and replace these supports with reaction forces. That would look like this. And then we could solve for the magnitude and direction of those forces by using our three equations of static equilibrium. Now that we know all the external loads, we can find the internal resultant loads acting at most any point in the member. The internal resultant loads are called internal resultant loads because they are the loads that occur within the structure as a result of the external loading. If the external loads are all zero, then the internal loads in the structure will also be zero. The internal loads can be thought of as the external loads that are being transferred through the structure to the supports. Let's say that we are interested in finding the internal resultant loads here at point B. We would then theoretically cut the structure at point B and evaluate the internal resultant loads there. This is done using a free body diagram of the cut structure as shown here. So now that the structure is cut, I must replace the uh, missing part of the structure with my internal resultant loads. For a coplanar structure like this, there are three of them. First, there is an internal resultant normal force acting right through the centroid of the cross section at B. There is also a shear force, we'll call that V sub B, that's acting parallel to that cut. And there is an internal moment acting about point B, we'll call that M sub B. These are our three internal resultant loads. We can solve for their magnitude and direction by using the same three equations of static equilibrium that we used to get the reactions. Let's summarize the steps for finding internal forces and moments in a structure. First, draw a free body diagram of the structural member and include all external loads and reactions. Second, find the external reactions using the equations of static equilibrium. That's summing the forces in the x, summing the forces in the y direction, summing the moments all equal to zero. Now, the third step is to draw a free body diagram of the cut member with all the external loads and reactions applied. The fourth step, add and label the internal forces and moments. For coplanar members, that's a normal force, a shear force, and a moment all occurring at the cut end. And step five, solve for the internal forces and moments using the equations of static equilibrium. And that's it.